Starting to see a definite absence of severe weather activity in the southern plains. Just a few thunderstorms this afternoon across Kansas and Nebraska. Let's take a look at the surface map. Well, instead of talking about the highs and lows, let's talk about what this weather map means. How does a forecaster read this? Well, we do see a pronounced lack of pressure gradients. There's only like maybe one, two, three lines, maybe four up here. So we're not dealing with those very strong pressure systems that we saw during the winter and spring. We do have this migratory high pressure area that's dropped out of Canada. It represents a cooler air mass. If you look at the temperatures, you don't really see that. 97, 90, 88, that's pretty warm. But the secret is the dew points. Look at those 50s. Now that is an indicator of air mass source region. So definitely look at that when you're using these maps and you can see even 30s dew points up in Illinois. That's very dry air coming out of Canada. Now out west we've got these thermal lows. I think I would call those thermal lows because this whole area is in the 90s. This is a very warm air mass not just 107 at Vegas, 110 at Phoenix, but there's also 90s all through the desert region. 95 at Winnemucca, that's some seriously warm air. So that's helping to sustain this area of low pressure from the four corners into Nevada. You don't see it centered so much out in southwest Arizona where we typically see it. So that does show the impact of those very warm temperatures. And the dry line, not so evident because we don't have a whole lot of synoptic scale support. And I can estimate that by looking at the thickness pattern. Those red lines up near the top, they're packed very close together in North Dakota, South Dakota, and Nebraska, not so much down south. So the jet stream pattern is shifted well up north. And you do need a little bit of that westerly component to support the lee side troughing and help to tighten the moisture gradient in places like texas colorado the cap rock and so on so not much convergence down in that area and you can see the wind flow is about the same on either side of that dry line so then we go up to jet stream level 250 millibars about 34,000 feet and we see a lot of troughing out in the Pacific, a large trough extending from the Aleutians into the eastern Pacific Ocean. We've also got this ridge on the west coast, so no wonder we've got some of that warm weather there. And that ridge extends all the way into southern Alaska, the polar front jet rounding that ridge and coming back into the U.S. through Montana. North Dakota and down into the Great Lakes area. And also some of that ridging in Texas all the way up to the Four Corners area, helping to support some of that hot weather that we're seeing this afternoon. How hot? Let's take a closer look. There's the surface map at 5 p.m., 93 at Dallas, 100 at San Antonio. The dew point, 64, which is lower than that 73 that we saw earlier this week. Hundreds all through Midland down to San Angelo. And we've got heat advisories all through New Mexico. Places like Farmington, Tucumcari, Roswell, El Paso, Albuquerque, all under heat advisories. Temperatures up to 102 there at Tucumcari, 104 at Alamogordo, 105 at El Paso. And this is one of the hottest days of the week in Arizona, up to 110 at Phoenix, as we mentioned, and 106 at Tucson. And out towards Las Vegas, the heat continues 108. This whole area from Arizona to around Merced, California, right in here, this is under a excessive heat warning. And the northern periphery up here, that's under a heat advisory that includes Tonopah, Area 51, and Reno as well and they're 97 this afternoon. Through the San Joaquin Valley, a lot of heat there, 102 at Fresno, 101 at Porterville, and 102 at Bakersfield. So, yeah, quite a lot of heat to go around. Just pick your favorite city. And as we go north, we get some of the orographics, some of the moisture, some of the stronger winds aloft. That's all helping to support some of this shower activity all through the Great Basin area. 93 at Ogden, 90 at Salt Lake City, 
and the heat is going to continue through the weekend. And we'll cover that shortly. In the Pacific Northwest, 80s through Oregon, and even up in Seattle, 73 this afternoon, with 70s and 80s in British Columbia. The next question, what is the situation with precipitable water? This is always a big concern during the warm season. This is our supply of moisture for precipitation and high dew points as well. This afternoon, we've got 1.5 to 2 inch amounts through the central plains, a little bit weaker down south. And you can see some of that dry air has infiltrated much of the Midwest into the southeastern U.S. Precipitable water running about 0.5 to 1 inch. I'll just take you through the weekend real quick. You can see that the higher precipitable water concentrating along these baroclinic weather systems, these fronts that are going to be parked in the central plains area. So numerous rounds for convection, showers, thunderstorms, all through the weekend from Kansas, Colorado to the Ozarks. The Weather Prediction Center has some concerns of excessive rainfall going into Saturday and Sunday, shifting into the panhandles and into Oklahoma. And gradually as those boundaries sink southward, reinforced by more cold air, they'll shift into Arkansas. Oklahoma, Texas, and Louisiana. So that brings us up to midweek. There's Wednesday, Thursday, and we got quite a fetch of moisture coming into Florida for Thursday. Some of the models have indicated very strong tendencies toward cyclogenesis in the Gulf for late in the week. And you can see those precipitable water amounts up to 2 to 2.5 inches across the southeast. Here's the 500 millibar chart the mid-troposphere at about 18,000 feet. We saw a little bit of this with that jet stream chart. And we'll just kind of take you through the forecast. You can see the jet stream out there in the eastern Pacific coming into the northern states, the ridging across Texas. That closed high, very evident with the characteristic clockwise flow. And there's a double barrel low up there in Canada representing some very cold air advecting down south from northern Canada. We go into the weekend and you can kind of see how things evolve. Some ridging on the west coast, so that'll support some very warm weather this weekend in places like Washington and Oregon. And that anti-cyclone across Texas continues sinking to the southeast and breaking down into a ridge. Okay, then we go into Sunday and Monday. Not much change, a couple of migratory systems up north, and we've got this little cutoff low off of California. Still a little bit early to tell what that's going to do, but some rather stout southerly flowed into Arizona and California. So that could be associated with some changes in the weather, maybe a little bit of an increase in the chances for precipitation. And even got 50 knot flow there for Thursday. Big high across New Mexico and Texas, so that area will remain very warm. And we get into next weekend, the 15th and 16th. Progressive flow across the northern U.S., not much evidence of blocking, although in the higher latitudes, yeah, it does look a little bit blocky up there with this very strong ridge across Alaska and Yukon. All right, let's take a look at that forecast starting with tonight. Lots of thunderstorms in the central plains, but cold air is on the way. Quite a mass of it, and that's going to make a big change over the next several days. Going into tomorrow, Saturday, let's bring that up to the afternoon hours. You can see some of that cold air starting to advance into the Midwest, into the Corn Belt, and into the northern Appalachians. Heat wave will spread into the northern Great Basin. We will see 96 at Winnemucca, 95 at Boise, and 88 at Pendleton. And Seattle also warming up. They're going to see the warmest day of the week with 79. Hot once again in Texas, looking for 96 degrees at Dallas, 99 at Midland, and 101 at Amarillo. But up north, much colder. Highs only in the 70s up in Nebraska and even down into Kansas. Slight risk from SPC for severe on the tail end of this front. Upslope flow, eastern Colorado, southwest Kansas, looking for a chance of severe weather. That's going to be mostly hail, 
but a possibility for maybe isolated tornadoes around Denver, out to Lyman. And, of course, that big temperature drop, another reinforcing shot coming up from the prairies into southern Saskatchewan. It's going to be much colder through the western provinces there. Then we go into Sunday. You can see that cold air dropping south for early afternoon. Well, we're going to see a lot of heat in the southeastern U.S. Hot weather in Georgia. Looking for 99 at Jacksonville right there. 94 at Atlanta, 97 at Charleston, and 94 at Wilmington. But relief is on the way. In the north central U.S., that cold air spreads down only 60s and 70s all the way to Illinois and Missouri and Kansas. Marginal risk from SPC with that easterly flow there in the Texas Panhandle, the high plains of northeast New Mexico, also a severe risk there. Meanwhile, the heat up north in the northwestern U.S. modifies Looking for a high of 91 degrees at Reno, 89 at Boise, and 84 at Spokane for Sunday. Then we go into Monday. Some more of that cold air coming south, but starting to become a little bit modified. Down to the south, looking for another hot day in Florida, 100 at Jacksonville, with 97 at Tallahassee. In the south central U.S., a cooler day in some areas, looking for a high of 73 at Amarillo. And cooler as you go to the northeast, 75 at Kansas City with 69 at Chicago. Then for Tuesday, another burst of heat in the western U.S. We're going to be coming up to 102 at Fresno with 98 at Sacramento. We will have that upper level low drifting off the south California coast. Still a little bit too early to say what that's going to do. Meanwhile, a big jet max moving into Oregon and Washington. So that'll have an effect on weather there, maybe some troughing and maybe some rain, some more graphics. And we go into midweek, and you can just follow along. Looks like some dry air infiltrating into parts of northeast Texas and Arkansas. Heat rotating clockwise around the subtropical high into the northern plains. We're going to see 90s in South Dakota and Nebraska. 91 degrees at Denver for Wednesday. Then for Thursday, Denver probably getting its hottest temperature of the week up to 92, 95 there at Goodland. And in the northwestern U.S., big trough settling in across that area, lots of cold advection, some blustery, cool weather in that part of the country. Meanwhile, in Florida, yeah, we've talked about that 2 to 2.5 inch precipitable water filtering across the state. And we could see quite a bit of rain there and maybe even a tropical depression or a tropical storm around there. Uh, NHC not really forecasting anything, but stay tuned. We'll see how that goes. Okay. So, yeah, very active in the northwest and western states, not so much in the northeast. And that will be all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.